All right, I'm gonna cover the major arteries and veins in the body that you're going to learn. And we're gonna start with the arteries. We're using this flat man model here. So if you recall, the main artery coming off the heart is the aorta here. Taking all the oxygenated blood to the entire body. When the aorta gets up here and arches, they call it the aortic arch. And coming off the aortic arch are three branches. Of course, these are gonna supply oxygenated blood to the head and to the arms. So let's look on the left side of the aortic arch. Remember, we know this is the left side because here's the tip or apex of the heart, which is on the left. So on the left side, we have a branch going up the neck to the head. That's going to be the common carotid. But we also have a branch here called the left subclavian that's going to go to the left arm. Now remember, it's called the subclavian because it goes under sub the clavicle right there. Now on the right side, instead of having two branches, it starts as one branch. And this branch is gonna be short. It's only gonna be from here to here. And since it's still going to the head and arm, we call this one branch the brachiocephalic, the brachiocephalic artery. Why there's a brachiocephalic on this side, on this, not this side, we don't know. That's the way it developed. But sure enough, this brachiocephalic is going to split to also go to the head and neck by the right common carotid and the right subclavian, right there. So we have a common carotid on both sides and we have a subclavian on both sides. It's just that on the right side, we have this brachiocephalic artery and some people call it the brachiocephalic trunk. Trunks are usually not very long there. So you'll have to memorize that. Now, let's follow the common carotid up. So we got common carotid on each side up here, we can see that that common carotid is going to split into an external and internal branch. Anytime you have a vessel that has common to begin with, like the common carotid, it means it's going to split into internal and external. So if we follow this branch up, that's external because it's going to supply blood to the external part of the skull and head. If we follow this branch up, here, that's going to go deep into the brain. So internal carotid, external carotid. And they split off right here. So common carotid goes all the way up to here. This side, they just don't follow the common carotid up. Let's go to the arm now. Once we have the subclavian and it goes under the clavicle, as soon as it gets to this armpit area, remember the term for armpit was axillary. So we have the axillary artery, which is just a continuation of the subclavian. And it's gonna continue when it gets close to the humerus, they're gonna call it the brachial artery. It's just like roads. Some of them, sometimes they change names, but it's the same road. Now, once we come down here, the arm, the brachial continues into the elbow area, and then it's going to split into two. And remember, the thumb side is where the radius bone is, so we're going to call this the radial artery. And that's the one we feel the pulse on right here. Radial to the thumb. But the other side, on the pinky side, little finger side, is the ulnar bone, ulnar bone, so we call this the ulnar artery there. On this side, same thing, subclavian, 
to axillary, becomes the brachial, it's on the humerus, and they show the first split here of the radial, because I can see the thumb down here, and the ulnar, which would go down to the pinky. All right, now, we also have to supply blood to the inferior of the body, the torso, and the legs, and the organs. So this aortic arch is gonna curve and start going downwards. So at this point, when it goes downwards, number four there, they call this the descending aorta. And you can see it's gonna go behind the heart and come out through the diaphragm all the way through the ab abdomen. Now, if you can see this up here behind the heart, like you can on some of the uh, torso models, sometimes they'll call this descending portion from here to here the thoracic aorta, and this part from the diaphragm down to the hips, the uh, abdominal aorta. But the whole thing that's going downwards is the descending aorta. Now, once we get into the abdomen, there's some arteries we want to learn here. And basically, the best way to learn these are, you know, of course, remember where the organs are. We learned that in Anatomy Part 1. Um, and just to review that real quick, we would have the liver on the right, we have stomach, which they removed here, and the spleen on the left. Those are right under the diaphragm. Liver, stomach, spleen. Kidneys are bilateral towards the back of the body, both the other body. Here, been removed, are the intestines. Pancreas would be kind of right in the middle, anterior here, to the kidneys. Now, as we come down, there's three trunks coming off the um, abdominal aorta. And the best way to remember those are CSI, CSI. I'm gonna point out these trunks for you. Here, C, here, S, here, I. Now these are singular, they're not bilateral. There's one coming off the middle. These trunks come off the middle of the abdominal aorta. C is for celiac trunk, S is for superior mesenteric, and I is for inferior mesenteric. Now let's see where these go. Coming off the celiac trunk, and I'm just pointing to the middle part here, right here, because the celiac trunk, as soon as it comes off the aorta, it's gonna split and go to three different areas here. It's gonna send a branch to the liver, so that's called the hepatic artery. Oxygenate the liver. We have a branch coming up here that's gonna to go to the stomach, so that's gonna be the gastric artery. And then we have a branch here that is coming over to the spleen, so that's the splenic artery. Now this superior mesenteric trunk. Mesenteric means the intestines. So that's gonna to go to the superior part of the large and small intestines. Whereas the inferior mesenteric is gonna to go to the inferior part of the intestines. All right, CSI with the C having three branches here. And this is gonna su probably supply the pancreas right there because that's where the pancreas would be. There's two bilateral sets of arteries coming off the abdominal aorta. Here, that's a bilateral set here, and they're going to the kidneys. So they're renal arteries. And then these two long ones, they're bilateral. They're coming way down here. And what's way down here? The gonads the testes and ovaries. So these are the gonadal arteries. So we have our prefixes here. Haddock, liver, splenic spleen, gastric, stomach, pancreatic, pancreas, 
mesenterics, go to the intestines, we got renals going to the kidneys, and the gonadals going way down to the gonads. So that covers the abdominal aorta. Now, when the abdominal aorta ends, we're going to split into two called the common iliac. Because remember, we're around the hip now. And that's the iliac part. So these common iliacs here to here. Now, remember what I said when the prefix of an artery is named common. That means it's going to split into internal and external. So sure enough, as soon as it splits, we have an internal iliac going deep into the pelvic region, and we have an external iliac exiting the hip. Common iliac ends at the split. So on this side, 30, common iliac, 31, internal iliac, 30, external iliac. This number 30 down here, 30A. This here is the sacral artery right here. Now let's follow down the legs. So now we have the external iliac coming out of the hip region, and it's gonna be continued to call that until it reaches the femur. As soon as it reaches the femur, 35, or is that 33? Um, that's called the femoral artery. We're changing the names again here, same road external iliac femoral. We're going to change the name again down here when it comes behind the knee. So remember that was the popliteal region. So number 40, change the name to popliteal or popliteal artery. You can feel that. You put your fingers behind your knee to feel the pulse there. And then it's going to come down here and become the tibial artery. Now there is a posterior tibial and anterior tibial. This is probably the anterior tibial. On this side, they actually show the anterior tibial coming down the front part of the tibia. And the only other one I would uh, learn here is 44 would be the dorsal pedal artery. And you can feel your pulse there as well. So there's, when we get to the um, pulse areas, the field dorsal pedal, um, you can feel it popliteal. In the groin area, you can feel the femoral. Of course, you can't feel any of those. Um, we're going to use the brachial artery to feel for blood pressure. And, of course, we already mentioned you can feel the radial artery quite nicely. And the best place to feel the artery, of course, is this big common carotid in your neck. You might be able to feel a branch of the external carotid up here as well. So that pretty much covers the arteries now. I'm going to, have to record a separate one for the veins.